We're getting to our headlines now and we're working to learn more this morning after someone shot and killed a 14 year old boy in the Park Duval neighborhood. LMPD says it happened just after nine Saturday night in the 3600 block of Stratton Avenue. Officers found the teenager dead at the scene and were told there are no suspects at this time. Anybody with information is asked to call the anonymous tip line. That number is always is 574 LMPD. You can also use the online portal. And a motorcyclist is in critical condition after a crash on the Gene Snyder. LMPD responded around 5.30 Saturday evening near the on-ramp to I-65. Police say the man was following behind a car when the car stopped suddenly. The motorcyclist hit the car and was thrown from the bike. First responders took him to the hospital and he's in critical condition. LMPD says there were no other injuries and everybody did stay at the scene. Several families are still without a home after an apartment fire in Fern Creek. You might remember we told you about this on GMK yesterday. This is a look at the damage. We got this video a little bit later on on Saturday. Two units saw heavy damage and 10 others were impacted. Crews from Fern Creek Fire, J-Town and Okalona responded to Haynes Trace off South Hurstbourne Parkway. WHAS 11's Alexis Jones and photojournalist Emma Gefter spoke with one brave neighbor. Shattered windows and boarded doors are what's left of these Hames Trace apartments after a damaging fire Saturday. Thankfully, everyone made it out safely with the help of firefighters and one brave neighbor. I did a good deed. I'm glad I was just more worried about life. Jeffrey Newman says he and his family were fast asleep when officers kicked through their door early Saturday morning. And you couldn't even see, you couldn't see the police through the smoke. It was so smoky in my house and in the apartment. I did not know and I was like, that's when Newman realized a fire broke out. He immediately grabbed his kids and mom and rushed towards safety. After I got the babies and the old lady out, I turned up and the lady above me at the right next to me, she was screaming. She had her cats and the smoke was coming out real bad. She touched the door and she was burning her hands. It was real bad. Prompting him to jump into action. I didn't mean to do it, but I couldn't just leave somebody there and the police couldn't get on the third floor. They wouldn't go to the third floor and I just luckily had that ladder and I was able to get her. Along with several animals inside the building. According to Fern Creek Fire Department, the fire came from the third floor patio and attic area. The cause of the blaze is still unclear, but Newman says he has a hunch. Electric, because the electric ain't working no more in the apartment and everywhere else is working. So, and the way it sparked so fast and spread it. Right now, he and 11 other families are without homes. Some also lost their belongings. However, Newman says he's just grateful everyone's alive including one person in particular. I wouldn't leave someone behind. In Louisville, Alexis Jones, WHAS 11 on your side. Officials with the Red Cross told us they plan on helping Newman and his neighbors find temporary shelter. You can call 1-800-RED-CROSS to speak with a caseworker if you're in need. It's a, been a weekend here uh, in our sports world, and the points just keep coming at LNM Stadium yesterday for the Cardinals. The team absolutely dominated their matchup with Boston College with a final score 56 to 28. Jack Plummer became the third Louisville quarterback to have five touchdowns in a game, rushing for one. The other two quarterbacks to do that, Lamar Jackson and Malik Cunningham, so he is not in bad company. And the Wildcats, too, picked up their first SEC win of the year, plus some sweet revenge in the process. UK rolled through Vanderbilt with a final score 45 to 28. WHAS 11's Ken Spencer has more from Nashville. Much like the construction here at Vanderbilt's football stadium, Kentucky is very much still a work in progress. But with two defensive touchdowns, the Cats proved Football is indeed a team game. I just feel blessed, you know. God thank the man upstairs for blessing me to be able to do that. I want to thank my team. You know, we went out there, we did what we were supposed to do, and we got rewarded for it. Did you know you were the first player in the history of the program to do that? I did not know that. You know, I'm very accomplished by that, but it's just the beginning. The momentum at that point had clearly shifted to Vanderbilt. Did you feel like that kind of that play? and that swing took a little bit of weight off your old shoulder? Yeah, absolutely. Like, our offense was struggling a little bit, and like I said, we were a team, so we got to help keep going. Then we was giving up some plays, so we had to just, we needed a big play, like we needed a turnover, so turnovers was always good. Before I know it, I've been pissed off at every press conference. <laughs> so I uh, told the team that I'm not going to allow, you know, I've said it to you guys before. I mean, that's you go on the road, you win by 17 points against a team I really respect, you know, and, and I know uh, 
that, that I know what we have ahead of us. Kentucky now begins the season 4-0 for a third straight year, just the second time in program history that's took place the last time 1909 to 1911. Reported in Nashville, Ken Spencer, WHAS 11 News.